I see you, I don't know, going green, bright green, or maybe like Degla orange. They're standing in Marissa's mom's pink tiled bathroom, staring at themselves in the fingerprint smeared mirror, trying to figure out what to do with Jesse's hair. Marissa stands behind Jesse, her chubby, oily face lit by the prospect of giving him a makeover. Really, something that extreme? I don't know, I kind of want to be a bit safe with the color. Maybe just blonde, or like a white blonde, or like a Warhol white, Jesse says, fiddling with his bangs. I don't want to draw too much attention to myself. I don't like being recognized in public. I mean, it's such a hassle being stopped on the street sometimes. Marissa grabs Jesse's head and brings his face in closer to his reflection, then pulls it back and mock smashes it into the mirror over and over till both erupting giggles over his theat. When they come to, Jesse makes a suggestion. Why don't we take it all off? Take it all off? Yeah, shave it. Shave my head. Bald. You're kidding, right? Don't you think that could be risky? Marissa asks. You want to draw less attention to yourself, but you want to do something with your hair that's going to put you in league with those skinhead assholes like Jason Fogel and Ian McKenzie? They'll kill you for looking like them but not really meaning it. Or what? Is that the direction you're heading in now? Yeah, I'm going Nazi, please. Could you really see me listening to boring hardcore punk? I just want to be free of the burden of hair for a little while. No mousse, no gels, nothing. The burden of hair? Jesus Christ. Marissa pushes him aside and centers herself in front of the mirror, then begins applying clear to the pimples on her chin. Seriously though, do you want to do something with your hair or not? I want to get out of here soon before my mom traps me and forces me to babysit my little turd of a brother. What does he even need a babysitter for, Jesse asks. He never moves from that pillow he sits on in front of your television. <laughs> totally. It's like, just give him the ColecoVision joystick and a can of Coke and he'll babysit himself. <laughs> Jesse goes into Marissa's room and spreads out on her bed and stares up at the, at the poster on the ceiling of Robert Smith and his exploding, drooping hair. Maybe I should go for the Robert Smith look, he yells out. Oh, I don't know what to do. Why don't you go through the box of hair dye under my bed and make a decision, Marissa says, coming into the room with two pairs of stockings. What do you think, she says, holding them up. The black and white striped ones are just the plain old black ones. I've never liked the striped ones, too pippy long stocking, he says, dismissively waving his hand without even looking at her. Where are the black ones? Yeah, I guess you're right. The black ones cover up my calves better anyway. Here, look at this while I get dressed. She hurls an issue of NME at him, and then slowly undoes the sash of the kimono she stole from her ex-piano teacher's bathroom. There's a good article in there about Susie and the Banshees. Come on, stop looking at me. She spins her index finger in a circle, directing Jesse to turn around and not face her. He stops pretending to drool and turns away as she gets into the stockings, a black t-shirt, and a safety pin, co safety pin covered kilt. So, are we going to go to that homecoming dance next week, he asks. It's the night before Thanksgiving. There's some big bonfire before it, I think. You could finally burn those Bananarama records you don't like anymore. <laughs> a dance at school? I don't think so. You're thinking about going? I don't know. Probably not. I'd only go if you were going. We do have fun dancing. Um, yeah, we do. But at all ages night at Revival, with our people. Not with all those preppy jock shitheads we're forced to go to school with. Did you find that article on Susie? Nah, it's Saturday. I really try to avoid reading on the weekends. He rolls back and forth across Marissa's bed, eventually wrapping himself up in the skull and crossbones afghan she crocheted for sewing class. But that's like fun reading, she says. She goes to her stereo and puts in the Darklands cassette she bought at Sam Goody last weekend, hits play, and turns the volume up a bit, then takes a seat at her sticker-plastered vanity table and begins sorting through the many cosmetics scattered across it. Marissa's little brother, Marvin, begins pounding on the wall that separates his room from hers. Turn that friggin' crap off, he screams. Fuck off, they scream back in perfect unison. They roll their eyes at one another, mouths slightly agape over his inability to appreciate the Jesus and Mary chain. What do you think of this lipstick, she says, waving Jesse over to the table with a small silver tube she's holding. And what the hell is up with those black overalls you're wearing? What, you don't like them? I got them at the Salvation Army. I mean, I'm never going to wear the bib slung around my neck, obviously. I just like the way the shoulder straps hang down by my knees. The pant legs are way too short, she says, examining him from head to toe as he approaches her. They're like floods. 
You look like you just jumped out of that Dexie's Midnight Runners video. <laughs> Come on, Eileen, they gleefully sing out. Jesse begins dancing around like the lead singer in the video, hips wiggling back and forth and hands clasped over his head. Marissa spins around to face herself in the mirror, smiling still, but then her face crumples in a near instant. God, I hate the way I look, she says, chucking, chucking the lipstick over her shoulder. Fat face, piggish nose, why do I even bother? Nonsense, Jesse says, coming up behind her. He lowers his head onto her shoulder and makes an exaggerated frown to get her to smile. Come on, laugh, he says, affecting his best, his best raspy Donald Duck voice while tickling her waist. Knock it off, she says, a slight grin breaking out as she tries to wrestle free of him. Ours is a beauty not evident to the common eye, my dear, Jesse says. Right, right, that old line. You know, you should really try out a new one when you're trying to make me not feel like shit. She brushes his hands out of her purple streaked blonde bob as he fidgets with strands of it like some fussy hairdresser. Stop, she yells, batting him away. He removes his hands and backs away from her, but then leaps back to the spot where he was just standing and jabs his index finger into the back of her head, hard. Then he turns to bolt from the room. Marissa pushes back on the chair she's in and grabs him by the tail of the black dress shirt that hangs on him so formlessly, then balls it up around her fist. She slowly rises out of the chair and then kicks it to the side, over by the recently torn down Madonna posters and box of scentless strawberry shortcake dolls in the corner of her room. <laughs> Jesse gets spun around to face her and creaks out, please don't hurt me, ma'am. Oh, it's too late for that, Marissa says, pushing him onto the bed, then climbing on top of him, pinning his arms down at his sides by resting on top of them with her knees. You're not going to do things to me, are you? He asks. Don't know yet, she answers, lowering her face down till their noses practically touch. Jessie heaves under her weight, struggling to breathe just a little bit, and says, you're not going to rape me, are you? Uh -huh. They stare deeply into one another's eyes as they try to control their quivering facial muscles. Each one determines to see the other one break down in peals of laughter first, but they both end up breaking down at the same time. When they finally tire, Marissa rests her head on Jessie's puny shoulder and sighs. Oh, you should be my boyfriend. Jesse starts giggling again, this time somewhat hesitantly. I can't be your boyfriend, silly. You're like the sister I never had. Oh yeah, that old line, she says. I'm all about the old lines, baby, he says. Marissa! Marissa's mom is screaming up to them from the bottom of the stairs. I need you to look after your little brother. I've got to go to TJ Maxx to exchange that top your, father, your father's mother bought me. <laughs> Marissa jumps off Jesse and thro uh, throws open her bedroom door, then turns to him, panicked. What are we doing? What should I tell her? Hurry, she whispers. Um, the library. We have to go to the library to work on a project. A project for school. I can't, Mom. Jesse and I have to go to the library to work on this project for school that's due on Monday. School? Well, okay. Be home in time for dinner. We're having Pizza Hut. Thank you. <laughs>